All right, we're ready. We've spent a lot of time designing our sites. And I know at the beginning it can seem a little bit awkward. Where do I put things? What do I want the colors to look like? But now that you have your site, it's time to be able to publish and share. We can publish so that the rest of the world can see it. And we can choose to have that be very open and public, or we can also choose to publish just for a specific audience. The other thing we can do is we can actually have a co-collaborator on our site and invite someone else to be able to edit with us. So let's look at both of those settings. So when I'm in my site, I'm going to go ahead and notice two buttons across the top. One is for sharing with others and one is publish. I'm going to go ahead and share with others first. How I like to be able to share with others is I like to be able to invite a co-editor. So I can go invite Danny Moss as being able to co-edit our site. I can send him a little message and I can send that to him. He now has editing privileges of this site. Just know though, if you ever needed to leave or change a school or you wanted to be able to um, transfer ownership for any reason, just know I'm the owner, but at any point I could go ahead and I can make Danny be the owner. I'm going to go say done. And now Danny can co-edit the site with me. I would see his little image appear in the middle of my screen at the top and I would know he's actually live in the site with me now. The other thing I want to do is make sure people can see this. So I'm going to hit publish. When I hit publish, it's going to give it a name. Here's where it can get a little bit crazy. As soon as I take Trisha's awesome site, no one else in Edmonton Catholic schools can call their site Trisha's awesome site. But let's say somebody else did because it's such a super cool name. I could just add a one, two, three or anything to it and it will tell me that it's available. To be perfectly honest, we're going to show you how to shorten your web link because nobody's going to be given the https colon slash slash sites dot google dot com slash ecsd dot net slash you get it. It's too long of, a, of an address anyways. That's not what we're going to share out. But now we want to talk about who can view your site. The default is anyone in ECSD. That means someone has to log in with an Edmonton Catholic Schools Google account in order to see your site. This can get a little bit frustrating sometimes when people are using mobile devices to view a site simply because they're not logged in necessarily to their Google apps when they're on their phones. It also is if we want our parents to be able to see a site, then we would need to not have that. So we can change that very easily. I'm going to go ahead and say manage. Look at the same share with others view came up. Now it says published. Anyone at ECSD can find and view. I'm going to go ahead and change that. I can say anyone can find and view. That means anybody I give this link to is going to be able to get there. If I say specific people, it means that I'm going to type in the email addresses of the people that are allowed to view this site. This is great if you have a teacher or a department site. I'm going to go ahead and say save. So I can see that I can customize any of those settings at any time. Now, if I was worried that Danny was going to publish or change access or add more people, I can go ahead and prevent him from being able to do that. So you can change that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say done. Now, one of the important things to note is I can also request public search engines not to display the site. This is handy if you're teaching a course like biology or you know something that people are searching for. It won't show up in a Google search, which allows to protect some privacy. I'm going to say publish. And now my site is going to be published and viewable. So you'll notice there's now a little drop down. This particular structure is my building link. I need to go view publish site, this is what I'll know that it looks like in the real wide world. I'll be able to copy the link in the top URL bar. I can go back and I can continue to edit. Now, from now on, any changes I make to my site that I want to be viewable by the world, anytime I make some changes, like for example, perhaps I've added another little picture here. Let's go ahead and find something I can put on my page. What you'll notice is that if I go ahead and I say view publish site, whoa, where is that picture? It doesn't automatically show up. I have to make sure that whenever I make changes to my site that I would like to be viewable on the other side is every time I make changes, I have to hit the publish button again. And it just basically makes it live. Now, we like to shorten our links to our sites. 
you'll notice that if we go to like our MTech Google site and we go to our homepage, uh, everybody in the district knows if you visit bit.ly slash mtechgoogle, you're going to get to all of our Google resources. This is really easy for us to be able to hand out and give to other people without having to memorize a big long address. So I can email people the published link to my site, but especially if we're talking about students and parents, it's nice to be able to have a shortened link for people to be able to find. There's lots of web shorteners out there, but one we really love is the bit.ly because I can also customize the link and not have to leave it be alphanumeric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my view published site link and I'm going to put it in that shortener. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to be on Trisha's awesome site and right here it says copy publish site link. So this is the published site, the one I want to copy. I'm going to say copy. And now when I go to bit.ly and I've put the link in the bottom of the uh, course for you, I'm going to hit create. I'm going to paste that long URL. And now it's created me an alphanumeric um, shortened link that I could give people. I like to take it one step further and I'm going to call this ECSD awesome. Oops, typo and I'm gonna go ahead and say save. The link's now been edited. Now, if somebody already had ECSD awesome, bit.ly, I wouldn't be able to take it. So I do have to make it be something unique, so sometimes it takes some playing around. Now I can copy that link. And what I like to do is on my homepage, honestly, I just like to be able to add it so people can see it and know how to be able to get there. Now I have a custom web link that I can give to people to be able to get to my site without having to memorize a big long web address. That's it. It's so easy. Another thing we love to do is we like to, in our Google Classroom, create a class materials post and put our class website as well. So give it a try. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your published sites. In just two more lessons, you're going to have the opportunity to earn your Google site certificate and hand in that published link to your site in order to earn your certificate. So I'm excited to see them all. Try giving it a shortened link and putting it into that form to be able to get your certificate.